Hi everyone, thank you for watching this short video. Today I'm going to be talking about migrating your existing reporting solutions to Power BI. Um, we go through some areas to consider and how we can help. So to start with, um, my name is Liz McCreish. Um, I'm a principal consultant here at Thurigood. And as part of my role, I get to work closely with many of our consultants, partners and customers and hearing a lot about the challenges that they're facing when they're looking to move their reporting solutions. In terms of who Thurigood are, we're a specialist data and analytics consultancy. Uh, we're a global company who are experts in helping organizations to manage digital transformation through the integration of data engineering, data science, and data visualization techniques. We have a strong technical expertise across a range of technologies, but also a very clear focus on working with customers and understanding what is driving their requirement and their particular business need. So, as I said, today I'm going to be talking about migrating reports to Microsoft BI and the areas to consider. So one of the things that you should take advantage of when you're moving to a new reporting solution is not to have to actually take all of the reports and migrate all of them. So we would recommend analyzing the usage stats and seeing which reports are actually being used, how frequently they're being used, and try to cull that list down so you're not kind of taking some of the older unused reports with you. Depending on the timelines you're working to, you might want to understand whether you need to do a, a lift and shift, so literally take what's developed and just rebuild in Power BI or whether you want to take a step back and redevelop some of your reports in order to take advantage of some of the Power BI features. If you are doing lift and shift, then you need to look at the dashboards to understand which visualizations can be lifted and, and replicated exactly as is in Power BI. That won't necessarily be the case for all visuals. And where that's not possible, it's important to think to involve the users and users. So to understand the business question they're trying to answer with that particular visualization to ensure that those needs are being met. A few areas that I've seen in the past from customers where they've got an existing report where the functionality isn't exactly transferable are things that we're using ranks. Sometimes for the data labels, you may or may not have to use a, a reporting tooltip to add additional functionality in there. Handling of mixed data labels, so reporting absolute values and percentages side by side. And to change like the top, that's not a set as a parameter. So you've got to actually edit the report to change that. So just a couple of little things that we've seen over the over the years when people have been doing migrations. Depending on the scale of your rollout, you may want to think about a longer term roadmap. So the first thing I would say is, is that that kind of analysis stage. So looking at the existing report servers, looking at the usage, who's using them. So there may be some critical reports that have got a few number of users, but they're very high importance. Understanding where the data is coming from and, you know, are you refreshing things daily, hourly, weekly, monthly, and then have a look at those reports and kind of come up with a plan of action. Again, depending on the scale, it may be recommended to do kind of a proof of value. So pick a subset of reports, some simple, some more complex, and just look at what the effort is to actually migrate those reports to Power BI see if there are any noticeable gaps, um, and if so, what would the recommended workarounds be? And then based on that, your remaining set of reports that you need to migrate, then that gives you an estimate and you can then start to prioritise. And then when you want to work out what those waves need to be and how you want to prioritise them, it could be down to a departmental level, it could be down to the complexity, to the highest priority, to any new business functions and availability for users to UAT. So you need to work that plan out and that will vary based on, again, the number of reports and the complexity. And then once you've actually got to the point where you've delivered all of your reports in Power BI, there are a couple of areas I think it's worth flagging up that you should consider, especially if you're doing a waved or a rollout approach. How do you cope with living with multiple reporting tools? So how do your users know when to go to the legacy reporting system or to go to the new Power BI reports? We've actually got a solution called the Reporting and Analytics Hub that takes care of that for you. I've included a link here to that on our website, but I'd be more than happy to speak to that or to do a demonstration of its capabilities. And then the other aspect I think to consider is user empowerment. How much of an in-depth user empowerment program do you want to put in place? Do you have certain users that will need to be able to create new content and new Power BI reports versus other users who will just be consuming those end results? Also, because if it's a new rollout, you need to think about things like the Power BI governance, which I think we've got some other videos on, and also training up your admin users to be able to monitor and manage that system going forward. So thank you for your time today. I hope this was useful. This is just a very high level overview. If you do want to know, know more, please reach out and get in touch with me. If you do want more information on our website, we've got upcoming events. We've got 
perspectives, so pre-recorded videos, on-demand content and case studies. And hopefully there you find some more information. Please do reach out and get in touch. Thank you for your time.